Oh, this is Brother Kromar from the Maths Department. This is a continuation of videos dealing, dealing with inference for two proportions. And so now I'll be talking about hypothesis testing, where the last video I talked about confidence intervals. So hypothesis testing, now let's just, I just want to review here a little bit how we state the known alternative hypotheses in previous problems. First of all, going back to Unit 2, when we dealt with one sample where the standard deviation was known or unknown, we said mu, or the null hypothesis was that mu was equal to a value. And the alternative could be a two-sided test or a one-sided test, either less than or greater than. Then and we had, later on in Unit 2, we dealt with independent samples where the means, the population means, are equal from the two groups. And then the alternative hypothesis, and we say it's, it's the population mean of group 1 is equal to the population mean of group 2. And the alternative hypothesis, we look at those two population means from both groups. Uh, and then the alternative can be not equal to for a two-sided test or less than or greater than for a one-sided test. You can also do, and I'm comparing this top part to this bottom part, this is with quantitative data, no, this is with categorical data. One sample versus one proportion, the only difference is we're dealing with population means for quantitative versus uh, population proportions for categorical data. And this well is two proportions, and this is how we state the known alternative hypotheses for two proportions. Q1 is equal to P2, so the two population proportions are equal. And then the alternative is that they're either not equal, or one's less than the other, or one is greater than the other. Okay? So now here are the five steps of doing a hypothesis test for two proportions. You state the known alternative hypotheses, where the null is P1 is equal to P2. And then the alternative is either not equal to, less than, or greater than. We compute a test statistic, and here's the formula for the test statistic. We take the two sample proportions, so the p-hats, not the p-tildes, but the p-hats. So we're not doing any adjustments for the sample proportions. Minus p1 minus p2, which is, a, a, this is relative to the null hypothesis, so this is really zero. And then we divide it by p-hat times 1 minus p-hat. Notice here that's not with these 1s and 2s here, it's just p-hat times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2, and p hat is equal to this number right here. You can do all of that by hand if you want to, but my recommendation is to use Excel. In fact, me talking it out a little bit, my tongue was tied a little bit, just talking through um, that formula. Okay, so I would, I mean, you could do it by hand if, you, if, you, if you're more comfortable with it, but I would use Excel. Okay, so step three is to determine the p-value, um, and you can either use Excel or use the applet. And then the last two steps are the same. You reject the null if the p-value is less than the level of significance if not, then don't reject, and then you state your conclusions relative to the alternative hypothesis. These last two steps are the same as what you've seen before. So let's go through a couple of examples up here uh, uh, for this. Is the proportion of men that taste PTC different than the, the proportion of women? Based, and PTC is a piece of paper, it looks like litmus paper, but you put it on your tongue. And if you, uh, if you can taste something, it's a real bitter taste. And most people can taste it, but some cannot. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that's genetic. So going back to this, based on a recent study done by Elise Johnson, she found that out of 66 females, 51 can taste PTC or the bitter taste. Out of 52 males, 38 can taste PTC. Test the claim that the proportion of men and women who taste PTC is different with the level of significance of alpha equal to 0 0.05. We're just looking to see if it's different. So step one is the null is that they're equal. And the alternative, since we're looking for a difference, we just uh, we just want to see uh, it's a two-sided test. So P1 is not equal to P2. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information and put this into my in, into um, into Excel. I'm going to take 51 and 66. So 51 is X1 and 66 is uh, is N1. And then 38, which is x2, and then 52, which is n2. And so I'm going to do a two-sided test. Okay, and so there's options here. You can either do a one-sided test or a two-sided test. And so here's my test statistic, my p-value, and that's what I'm looking for here. So my test statistic is 0.526. My p-value is point or 0 0.599. So since um, and this is this is how it's displayed here using the applet. I put 0.526 is my test statistic, shaded both sides and got the area, which is, it matches this here, which is 0.599. Now, since my p-value is greater than my alpha, then I will not, then we do not reject the null hypothesis, and we have insufficient evidence to say that the proportion of men and women who can taste PTC is different. So we state the null hypothesis here, 
Uh, so we don't reject the null, and then we state the alternative hypothesis where we say that we, we just we we uh, we have insufficient evidence for it, and so we so because we didn't reject the null hypothesis. Let's go through one more example of this here. So um, here's an example where. Uh, some people have claimed that mortality rates are higher for patients admitted to a hospital on weekends compared to patients admitted on, on a weekday. The problem is that the quality of care in an emergency care facility may differ at different times of the week. Doctors Bell and Rettelmeyer hypothesize that the probability of the, that a patient with an aortic aneurysm will die is greater if they are admitted to a hospital on the weekend compared to the weekday. Out of those 4,145 patients admitted during the weekday, uh, 1,476 died. Out of those 1,309 patients admitted during the weekend, 553 died. Just to see if there's a lower percentage that died during the weekday versus the weekend with a level of significance of alpha equal to 0.05. Okay. So what I recommend doing is, is stop the video, go through these five steps to see if it matches my results, and then start the recording or start the video. Start the video. Okay, here are the results. We're looking to see if P1, now the null hypothesis is always P1 is equal to P2. The alternative is that P1 is less than P2, okay? So we're looking to see if one, if the weekday is less than, that's the lower percentage die during the weekday versus the weekend, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is, let me just get out of this here. I'm gonna go to my, go to Excel, and I'm gonna put, put in 1,476 for my x1, because that matches this number right here. And then my n is 4145. So that's what, for my first sample, that's what I put on here, 1,476, 4,145. And then for my next uh, for my next group, so this is on weekends, 553 die on the weekends out of 1,309 patients, okay? And so we're doing a one-sided test, so I'm going to switch this over to one-sided. By the way, if we failed to mention this earlier, to a, for a confidence interval, this is where you can change your level of confidence, it's right here. So here's where I get my results, my test my test statistic and my p-value, okay? So my test statistic is negative 4.331, and so this number here, ran at three decimal places to right, is close to, is, is zero, but it's close to zero because it never is zero. Here's an example of, of what it looks like on on the applet here, where I, um, here we go here, where I have uh, a negative 4.331, and it's really shaded on the left, you really can't see it, it's because so many standard deviations away from, from the null hypothesis. And so since our p-value is less than alpha, our, our null hypothesis is rejected, so we have sufficient evidence that the lower percentage died during weekday versus the weekend. So don't, uh, don't get sick on the weekends is the message that I'm getting out of this here. So, but uh, it's based on the results of, uh, based on aortic aneurysms. Um, that, so just be mindful of that. So finally, what I want to mention is, is that check the requirements that the two purport that the samples are, in, are independently obtained using a simple random sample. That from both samples, you have to have N1 times P hat one, or N times P hat, if that's greater than 10, as well as N times one minus P hat, that's also greater than 10, and you want to do that for both samples. You can check that by looking at this, these numbers here. And if all of these numbers are greater than 10 in your Excel output, then you're good. And it looks like in this case it is. Okay. And our descriptive statistics, numericals are, the, are both p hats, and then we use a pie chart or a bar graph. I showed this to you earlier, and I should, probably should have showed you something else in the confidence interval slides. But this is back to the PTC. This is for females who tasted PTC versus males. And so we have a, a bar graph for each of those separately. And I have listed the percentages as well as the, the frequencies for each. And then I have the same thing as well for a pie chart. We have one pie for females and one for males. Okay. And that concludes the videos dealing with two proportion. If you have any questions, please speak to your instructor or to one of your TAs.